fame is the spur which the clear spirit doth raise the last infirmity of noble mind to scorn delights and live laborious days but the fair guerdon when we hope to find comes the blind fury with the abhorred shears and slits the thin-spun life but not the praise phoebus replied and touched my trembling ears dedication to william wordsworth with earth's whole bulk between us i a child of the far south remembering with what glee of sacred fellowship my soul beguiled by thy wise wonder dreams hath grown to be even from the burthen of its mystery happier if aught upon these thoughts hath smiled of the true light of spiritual passion mild though mighty i would point that light to thee and haply that thy glorious head might bend approvingly awhile over the wreath which from my native wilderness i send this swelling hope within my heart did breathe so fervently that kneeling lo beneath australia's heaven these votive lines i penned thoughts note in this series of sonnets the arrangement of the rhymes is somewhat peculiar in departing from the italian model in this respect i am conscious of not being induced thereto by a desire merely to innovate but carefully trying the form i have here chosen not to say invented by my own ear i venture to believe that it fits the english sonnet or rather the sonnet in english more agreeably than the adopted one above referred to one morning how beautiful that earliest burst of light which floodeth from the opening eye of morn when like a fairy palace dew bedight bow storying over bow that spreads the thorn and sweet the melodies that toward the corn in tassel or the orchard then invite and that most love-like ever fresh delight which breathes of many a bloomy thing new-born breathes from vine clumps in the moist dells appearing rich meads and river banks and cheering then the voice of cattle to their pasture steering and the full speech of fieldward hastening men my very boyhood seems renewed again mid these delights like a delight careering two noon evening and night with what content the forest bowers are blessed and streams of coolness warbling when the breeze crawls scorchingly at noon o'er the oppressed and browning herbs in the unsheltered lees but sweeter far the gradual degrees of shadowy eve when in the dreamy west cloud-wrought elysiums hang in golden rest and smile down bliss for every eye that sees then of deep night the still mysterious mean how grateful with her solemn birds in flight dim gliding neath the stars whilst o'er the scene the moon comes pacing with a step of light alone mid these in memory's despite my soul forgets that wrong hath ever been three beauty first in the human form and face so fair tis seen and in all shapes of animal being also in things inanimate if rare in blending colours next and sounds agreeing till thought grow gifted with that inward seeing which finds it in the mind beyond compare and in the infinite combinations there of memory or knowledge fixed or fleeing the inmost spirit of all truth that hues the countenance of science throbs like thought in every star of heaven and embues all the moon looks on so the heart is brought alive in every sunbeam if love taught such bright communion it would not refuse four poesy rising and setting suns of liberty mountainous exploits and the wrecks thick strewn by stormy passion or life's treacherous sea relieved by shores of green delight and boon and starry dreams and the serene pale moon of pathos these with all of which they be idealisms 
are of poesy the bodily temple into fitness hewn and for its soul all that the mind can see is of beauty harmonizing with the might of natural ties and social sympathies and that deep spirit of piety whose flight is strongest and most heavenward mid the blight of mortal misery its soul are these five true and false glory how long shall splendid guilt mankind deceive see conqueror after conqueror furious sweep across the past ambitious each to achieve time's most unrighteous victory and so reap unequal sway and make their age one heap of bloody marvels for slave bards to weave into loud verse and finally so leave to glory names that she should blush to keep how great are they who tyrants did debel and yet all public dignities disown but such as were the means to serving well compare an alexander's wild renown with the immaculate memories that crown the souls of hamden washington and tell six intellectual majesty his mind alone is kingly who the one but venerates of present things or past what he believeth good kneeling to none save god and truth who awed not by this vast and shadowy scheme of life but anchored fast in love and sitting central like the sun so gives his mental beams to pierce and run through all its secrets while his days may last and thus progressive little faith hath he for mysteries till sounding them he hear the gathered tones of their stirred depths agree with that religious harmony severe which anthems to his spiritual ear the invisible presence of the deity seven the poverty of greatness alas i know not why it should be so but the most rarely mental of mankind are seldom prosperous in life as though high heaven severe in simple good designed in thus denying to majesty of mind all accidental blazonry to show that lasting glory thence alone can flow and that the favour of the world is blind the seers of old were poor in all but style nay even jesus for a price was sold and lived and died a child of scorn the while herod could buy supremacy with gold the dotard rome's almighty empire hold and even barabbas liberated smile eight andrew marvell spirit that lookest from the starry fold of truth's white flock next to thy milton there accept my reverence though feebly told and o oh, my heart from thy example rare henceforth its being for worthiest ends would bear thy thoughts and deeds were towering all and bold and like the steadfast columns that uphold some awful temple to thy duty were how much thy story has enlarged my ken of human greatness of mere heroes i with indignation ever read but when of thee as lifted into virtue's sky i feel how nobly all may live and die and glory in my brotherhood with men nine worldly success worldly prosperity is often less a proof of having than of wanting sense and most is thwarted by the noble excess of wit love valour or benevolence i know a bloodless thing at whose expense man ne'er rejoiced nor woman in the guess and careful feel of his mere selfishness more mathematic than a spider hence although in look unsightly as an elf nor favoured otherwise and aught but clever nothing but death shall cut him short of pelf the instinct of the brute may err but never might even passion from its object sever a thorough worldling's providence for self ten the first great australian poet glorious his lot whom poesy shall name her first high priest in this so sunny clime though thereby clothed as with a robe of flame 
with her creations of the olden time much conversant and by their bulk sublime moulding new matter let him build to fame quarrying from nature's everlasting frame the sculptured beauty of his lofty rhyme then mirrored ever in his polished page shall glow his countrywoman's lustrous eyes and future patriots a righteous rage thence catch or stimulate the brave and wise and lovely so beneath his native skies hallowing his memory from age to age eleven charity man were a grinding niggard lean and hoar even in his youth and in his riches poor didst thou ne'er leave thy blessing at his door if not from thee whence were there balm to cure the scornful injuries lowly hearts endure from pampered privilege thou art the core of wisdom's social aim who all the more fierce error threatens toils to hold thee sure on thy maternal bosom many a time i lay my head to dream that yet thy reign in its perfected influence every clime shall sweeten and as o'er some torrid plain fresh airs breathe vigour quicken man to gain capacity for love's millennial prime twelve the poetry of love there's a rare soul of poesy which may be but concentrated by the chastened dream of constant hearts where'er the ministry of beautiful nature hath enchanced the themes of some petrarchian mind whose story gleams within the past like a moon-silvered sea or where great interest the spirit free of faithful love hath caged in iron schemes or round it stirred such dangers as o'er drove the storm of ruin at last there evermore the very airs that whisper to the grove the echo's mystery and the streamlet's lore savour of passion and transfusive pour abroad suggestions to heroic love thirteen outward show for outward show we barter competence family comfort credit friendship's ties and even love's own dreamy eden whence the beautifulest flowers of life arise to breathe the soul sweet incense to the skies this social envy this most prurient sense of self-display grows daily more intense infecting even the wisdom of the wise children are pinched with want and early woe that she who bore them fashion's fribble slave to church or theatre full dressed may go sires husbands fops all itch alike and brave even ruin to o'erclimb some gaudy knave their rival in the court of outward show fourteen the fate of poetic genius in a sordid community hapless is he who meditates the nine where trade is all in all intent to build enduring verse for none will deem divine his divine art however he be skilled there taste like beauty by the hectic killed fades early leaving him alone to pine o'er youths and hopes and passions pale decline broken in means and lastly broken willed to misery wedded then as to a wife bearing the burthen of a loving heart unloved adown the desolate ways of life lo all the gain of his harmonious art is the cold worldling sneer or viler smart of envy's sting and with the ignoble strife fifteen consolation mine heart is heavy with an ancient sorrow my brain is aching with a clinging grief and if i seek to smooth away the furrow it ploweth in my soul in the relief and balminess of song the cheat is brief one feeling still from which the past did borrow exceeding light reminds me that the morrow must drag me further from its lost belief for solace therefore i would dive with truth into the depths of her remotest lore somewhere in nature's motherly heart there's ruth yet for her child though wounded to the core 
though life's first objects may beguile no more and misery clothe her with the dreams of youth sixteen on the political and moral condition of australia in eighteen forty five my country i am sore at heart for thee and in mine ear like a storm heralding breeze a voice against thee gathers warningly lo in what hands seem now thy destinies hands grasping all through party means to seize some private benefit and what should be thy freedom's dawn but gives ascendancy to lawless squatters and the hacks of these woe waits a land whose men are wise or brave for naught but self where even the best aside are thrusting honesty to don the knave where worth is trampled on by vulgar pride and where all beauty of the mind decried hangs dying o'er a mammon delved grave seventeen liberty o liberty yet build thee an august and best abode in this most virgin clime the old world yet power trampled to the dust hath never known thee in thy perfect prime seeing all rule which at a given time expires not as reposed in public trust and thence renewable but by suffrage must against thee in its nature be a crime seeing that all not privileged to name their governors and more to govern too choosing or chosen but to live on to thy shame that all are slaves in act who may not do whate'er is virtuous and in spirit who believing aught dare not avow the same specimens of love sonnets nothing in polite literature perhaps would do greater service to morality than a new school of pure and simple love poetry yet not deficient in ardour and imagination this is highly desirable not more on account of the social importance of the passion at all times than as an antidote to the impure extravagance which our amatory poets with scarcely an exception have hitherto celebrated the triumphs of the fair from an english periodical one a lover's longing for the society of his mistress as one who o'er arabian wilderness hath toiled a long and spirit wearying space and now athirst desires the gleaming face of some known spring and mid the shadowless and fiery sand remembers too to bless the sun-proof shelter of the storied race of palm trees that with leafy arms embrace each other there in verdant gracefulness so mid the sordid cares it proudly brooks and the dull daily tedium that it knows despite consolatories found in books my nature panteth for the evening's close when it may drink clear welcome from her looks and in the shadow of her grace repose two a beautiful mistress compared with a genial day fair as the day a genial day serene of early summer when the living air seems god's own breath and flowers with bosoms bare to the warm light look smiling forth between the heapy folds of nature's mantle green as listening to the mingled gladness there of birds and brooks even so serenely fair and of delight profuse is my heart's queen my spirit in the sunshine of her grace glows with intenser being and my veins fill as with nectar in your pride of place ye mighty boast ye rich heap gold apace i envy nor your grandeur nor your gains thus looking loved and loving in her face three a love dream in sleep with a sweet pang my brain was wrung and straight methought i passed from life away into some world where on a brighter day than ours came down mid fairer shades all hung with starry fruits whilst deathless warblers sung unceasingly a bliss inspiring lay and streams of nectar as in living play 
brimmed into symphony those shades among i seemed alone when from a bowery place a silver-winged shape came moving fast and as i looked in its approaching face methought a thrilling memory of it passed into my soul and in a little space twas rosa smiling as i saw her last four the parting to-day we part me far away to dwell from this the scene that saw our innocent love bloom into beauty the blue heaven above these hills and valleys and each rocky dell where echo hideth shall not these some spell of our sweet vows retain shall these not guess their gain and loss in our supreme distress till time to fame the eloquent story tell to-morrow and the sun shall climb yon hill bright as before all winged things shall start to song as glad as we were listening still this stream exult like a mirth gushing heart but i pursuing fortune's wandering star shall not with these rejoice from thee and them afar five absence nightly i watch the moon with silvery sheen flaking the city housetops till i feel thy memory rosa like a presence steal down in her light for ever in her mien thy soul's similitude my soul hath seen and as she seemeth now a guardian seal on heaven's far bliss upon my future weal even such thy truth is radiantly serene but long my fancy may not entertain these bright resemblances for lo a cloud blots her away and in my breast the pain recurs of absent love piercing and loud when shall i look in thy sweet eyes again rosa when cheer thee with like sadness bowed end of thoughts a series of sonnets by charles harper a poet's home here in this lonely rill engirdled spot the world forgetting by the world forgot with one vowed to me with beloved lips how sweet to draw as hiddenly from time as from its rocks yon shaded fountain slips my yet remaining prime here early rising from a sinless bed how sweet it were to view aurora shed her first white glances o'er the dusky wood when powdered as with pearls the sprays all gleam through the grey dawn like prophecies of good or like some fairy dream and while the clouds imbibed a golden hue and purple streaks grained yon ethereal blue by the glad voice of every early bird a sunful lake by breezes in their glee is rippled into smiles how sweetly stirred my spirits then should be and as like burning bullion brightens still the cloud-hung orient o'er yon misty hill i'd watch the sun's ethereal chariots come flooring the glades with flakes of crystal fire and the green spaces round my rural home where slept mine heart's desire when if sweet memories of her sleeping smile should my devotion thitherward beguile cheating the morn of its observance due my happy voice should not be wanting long to while her forth with loving transport true or wake her with a song awake my fair one for the glowing skies desire thee and a thousand flowery eyes look for thy coming from each pathway side with all things fresh and beautiful and bright the earth's illumined like an eastern bride arise my best delight what can be deeper than the heavens or bending or rarer richer than the colours blending beyond the green cones of the misty hill what gladder than the runnel's silvery fall and yet my spirit asketh something still tis thee the crown of all joined by the angel of my life 
the day's full glory setting the moist hills ablaze how lovelier now for her dear loveliness the birds the stream the forest's leafy stir catch from her voice a double power to bless and the flowers breathe of her the dews are brighter for her love-bright eyes and the air sweeter for the sweet surprise in every gesture of her gentle face so widely love's invisible spirit flings the visible enrichment of its grace o'er all regarded things filled with the fresh keen life that so sublimes both mind and body we should then be times repair us to our cheerful morning meal not more attuned by thankfulness of heart well to enjoy than willing in our wheel to spare a stranger part sufficed and grateful to her household care should she betake her then i field would fare to till the thriving maze or guide the plough through the rich loam or while the slant sunshine caressed them to remark the melons how they lumped from out their vine or of its weeds to rid some border rich with fragrant shrubs the folded blooms of which might seem all dreaming of their dewy bliss till by the breeze awakened they should more like blushes rousing to the passionate kiss of a too open love or else to loop against its latticed frame some runner's coils all tremulous and aflame with crimson stars or hung with silver bells such as the fays ring when on summer nights their sparkling revels out of forest dells scatter wild glancing lights thence to the orchard to well prune the robes the orange trees embossed with golden globes or then the peachy tribes all ruddy cheeked or plums live rubies and with these the rare boom nectarines fragrant swarms so lushly streaked that flavour even the air to tithe the rich pips of the apricot so early ripe where in some sheltered spots they gleam like nuggets hung in brilliant hoards or prop the pear's long branches loading low or mark if the pomegranates lamped with gourds stretch in a perfect row to pluck the fig that in its broad-leafed shade secretes its ripeness even like a maid mature for love who yet through bashfulness doth shun each would-be wooer's amorous gaze or stay the drooping vines whose every tress should catch the morning rays the glad green vines exuberant in health and overladen with their clustered wealth of bloomy grapes nectarious some all bright and half diaphanous like a precious stone some darkly purple like thick clouded light up from the sunset throne so should the noon draw on when in yon shade beside the rill on the green couch grass laid in careless luxury my faint limbs should be and hearing but the splash of feathered things then fluttering downward from some neighbouring tree to dip their shining wings or the slow rising and most summery hum of gorgeous insects that at times might come over the runnel and so voyage by or the light footfall on the further brink of some wild creature from its coverts nigh just venturing forth to drink i'd calmly think of all my wandering youth had suffered with a heart so dear to truth that she at length had portioned it with love and then of her who to my being's good was what the vitalizing sun doth prove to nature's bountyhood thus rested when the fierier winged hours were quenching in the west with freshened powers the field again in honourable toil should hear me ending what the morn begun till the dressed orchard or the well-turned soil showed a good day's work done then 
whilst the unharnessed steer i woodward took or sought the kine that in some grassy nook were ruminating all in full-fed ease the sun should light upon his western hill slanting his last beams through the shadowing trees and up the gleaming rill then sinking make a heaven's lit draperies seem golden confessions of the love supreme my heart poured out on nature and on her now waiting me at our peace hallowed board thus placed who'd care amongst the great to stir or with the rich to hoard the pens secured the final meal in haste dispatched though savoury both should forth to taste eve's odorous breath with renewed surprise to find elysium's painted in the west we then should look into each other's eyes to feel that we were blessed and feeling thus up through that golden glow thanksgivings from our mutual heart should go golden as it to him who made the time so beautiful that only then to be was sure baptism into a sublime sense of his deity observing afterwards how soon tis given for richest things to change for lo in heaven recesses of a loveliness divine transform ere long into abysms grey and dim-drawn reefy seas that widening shine round headlands far away and thence out infinitely out with not one shore-like limit or one isle-like spot then in a moment all again is change as more the congregated vapours loom and where those sky seas were broad prairies range oft clumped with groves of gloom or craggy glens appear and gorges dark browed in by mountains more abrupt and stark than their similitudes the alps of earth towered high with castles spectral and remote and altering ever to some wilder birth as up the cloud-banks bloat more solemn though less beautiful so seen is the wide-bending heaven than when the sheen of sunset drapes in their most rich array those western depths of wonder such the close meet us to glory dying with the day mutation ere repose and when the gloaming followed evening's flight down o'er yon hills whence yet a skyey light kept mellowing upward near to where first seen the glowing leader of the starry choir comes wingedly from out the blue serene even like a bird of fire the hushing bounties of those twilight hours falling into our souls as in the flowers balm breathing bosoms melt the silent dews should freshen every feeling mild and wise and thence o'er all our charities diffuse the quiet of the skies thus should the night in solemn guise come o'er with all her far ethereal eyes to pour upon my happy life and draw my soul to wander like a star the stars among and homeward point from the resplendent pole uranian beams of song or while the moon the world's apparent queen came whitening up in majesty serene reminding us of some dear long past nights i'd chronicle in rhyme the many things of lovely thought that from her mystic light had woven then their wings at length retired to our most cosy room stored with such books as fancy's fires relume some chosen song together we'd rehearse to its meet air with a long dying close or list great milton's or save wordsworth's verse or lander's noble prose or musical movements such as foretastes are of deeper being in some fairer star should flood our quietude till it might seem the very immortality of love came spell drawn down to perfect feeling's dream with dream power from above 
or reading of sweet genevieve whose own great minstrel wooer did so well intone the legend of the lady and the knight with nearer pleadings we might sweetlier know how first our hearts too into sudden light rushed joining long ago or of endymion should the lonely rhyme with mythic pageants while the listening time visions that sparkled from his starry mind whose memory is like a fervent tune heard richly prospering in a summer wind under the midnight moon or by mild spencer's dreamy love we live awhile in beauty's rarest breath and give our spirits to sail borne bark-like on by this or fairy seas all billowed with delights and round the wonder-witching bower of bliss peopled with magic slights and suddenly wrapped in such a sunset blaze of music flushing through our boreous ways from birds and waves voices and viols sweet all mingled in a weird wind warbling low yea such as might so long as heard even cheat the damned of their woe and lastly ere the drowsy hours of sleep came hushing o'er grateful hearts should steep their happiness in prayer acknowledging his goodness who hath filled the day and night with strength and bounty poured as from a spring for all who live aright End of part one the poet both great and bountiful is he the poet he whose glorious gift free of the world and making free heavenward on wings of melody can all things lift yes well may we account him great who through his every living line doth elevated elevate and throw into the mind's estate a ray divine and bountiful as well as great who still in every song of power commissioned godlike to create bequeaths to nature and to fate a rarer flower a rose of joy that cannot die a gem of light that naught may dim some well of faith no drouth shall dry some foretaste of those anthems high the seraphs hymn some glimpse of god some mightier star isling a supersensual sky some glory without stint or bar a value overvaluing far all pride can buy all pride can buy or avarice hoard or earth-born influence attain a loveliness by love adored a stuff by royal natures stored as priceless gain then great and bounteous both is he the poet he whose glorious gift free of the world and making free heavenward on wings of melody can all things lift yea whatso he hath seen or heard as at the morning's golden rise the lark from his ground nest is stirred and lifted till he flames a bird of paradise end of part two end of a poet's home and the poet by charles harper The Tower of the Dream by Charles Harper Part One How wonderful are dreams! Yet are they but, as some suppose, the thin disjoining shades of thoughts or feelings long forgone or late, as recomposed and put in ghostly act and strange procession, wildly mixed, and yet so lifelike, though thus composite and wild, by mimic fancy when alone awake and thence unhindered in her mystic craft she tracks again the drifts of wearied thought itself sunk sleepward wonderful no less are they though this be true and wondrous more is she who in the dark and stripped of sense can claim such sovereignty the queen of art for what a cunning painter is she then who hurriedly embodying from the waste of things memorial 
littering life's dim floor the forms and features manifold and quaint that crowd the timeless vistas of a dream fails never in a stroke and breathes as well with powers that laugh at sculpture or make good the fabled influence of pygmalion's weird devotion to his own creative craft a spirit of motion into all her work the test of deity inspiring too her phantom creatures with more eloquent tones than ever broke in subtle light-like wares upon the province of a waking ear but are they more true glimpses oft though vague deprived from some unnavigable sea of mystic being on whose lonely shore the normal terminates and where the pent impatient soul from its sleep shrouded crib is sometimes wont to slip and roam at large like crusoe staring forth or musing stand as did the intelligence of newton once on the bare beach of time while the great deep of truth by science yet uncharted loomed in shoreless width illimitably out under the incommunicable sky no answer cometh and as vain is all conjecture they are dreams but wonderful however we may rank them in our lore and worthy of some fond record are those states of our interior being though aberrant that with so capable a wand can bring back to the faded heart the rosy flush and sweetness of a long-fled love or touch the eyes of an old enmity with tears of a yet older friendship or restore a world-lost mate or reunite in joy the living and the dead and this can dreams with more as wonderful can when so wills their wands weird wielder whatsoe'er it be lift up the fallen fallen however low rejuvenate the worn enrich the poor the past in paradise and enchant the present build in the future higher than the hope of power when boldest ever dared to soar and null as with the sanction of the infinite the prison bars of place the dens of time giving the rigid and cold clanking chain which force that grey iniquity hath clenched about its captive to relent yea stretch forth into fairyland or melt like wax in that fierce life whose spirit lightens wide round freedom seated on his mountain throne or witching memory where she darkling lies can so accomplish her that she can make all brute bulk ocular the great earth itself diaphanous like a mighty globe of glass hung in the dim inane and thence reveal some yearned-for hearth at the antipodes with all its loves or spread at once her wings or all the eras of a wandering life as from the orient to the ends of heaven the silvery fans of light evolving show all things beneath them in one world-wide act instant and universal wonderful but not thus always are our dreams benign oft are they miscreations gloomier worlds crowded tempestuously with wrongs and fears more ghastly than the actual ever knew and rent with racking noises such as might if audible ever to a soul awake go thundering only through the wastes of hell so wonderful are dreams and i have known many most wild and strange and once long since as in the death-like mystery of sleep my body lay impalled my soul arose and journeyed outward in a dream of wonder in the mid-hour of a dark night methought i roamed the margin of a waveless lake that in the knotted forehead of the land deep sunken like a huge cyclopean eye lidless and void of speculation stared glassily up for ever sleepless up at the wide vaults of heaven and that i had also a vague and mystic consciousness that over against me on the farther shore which yet i might not see there stood a tower such as we read of in some old romance the darkness darkened until overhead solidly black the starless heaven domed and earth was one wide blot when as i looked 
a light swung blazing from the tower as yet prophesied only in imagination and brought at once its rounded structure forth out of the mighty gloom wherein till then so shut it seemed as one in substance with it and when this light had steadied hanging there suspended as by magic i might see in the wide lake whose whole disk new first shone glimmered enormous the far-falling stream of its wild radiance columnar and vast reach quivering down like a great shaft of fire though the lit fluid that so lightened seemed a vague abysm infinitely deep long at that wild light was i gazing held in speechless wonder till i thence could feel a strange and thrillingly attractive power in gradual operation and ere long my bodily weight seemed witched away and up i mounted poised within the passive air then glowed ascendingly sheer o'er the lake which far below as towards the wondrous lights the attraction drew me i beheld illumined even to its sullen depths with shifting beams that tangled towerward into one broad path of multifarious splendour one red blaze yet various interwriving wild and quick as every molecule of the watery mass had an organic life and played a part restlessly proper to its wayward self though tending all into one glow of bright disunion in bright union one red blaze still poised within the soft air on i slid nor knew i why but my amaze wore off as thus i glowed over the lake and still approached the tower and that so wondrous light and soon instead a many branching warmth like the sweet inklings of new love began to tingle in my blood and so divine the nearness of some yet unseen content still nearing or some yet inaudible joy so great so reconciling that it seemed it was a golden destiny whose spell had lifted me aloft and towerward on thus richly attracted and with this so sweet conception lo how beautiful a change part two within a circular balcony whose roof was fluted silver ledging at the eaves outward and resting upon shafts of jet whose polished pencils in a curving row descending to an ivory balustrade glistened in contrast with a covert gleam and which high up the tower emporched a huge and brazen door behold a lady all of light immaculate yea face and form all of a hesper radiancy composed and lovelier than lustrous stood alone yet as it seemed expectant for as still she witched me towards her she kept beckoning still with tiny hand more splendid than a star beckoning and smiling not as mortals smile with visible throes to the more face confined but with her whole bright influence all at once in gracious act as the immortals smile god happy or as smiles the morning when its subtle lips in rosy glory part and redden lengthwise under and above full many a pearly cloud and breathe the while a golden prevalence of power abroad that takes them all into his own delight transfiguring all and with a voice intense and intimately tender as the first fine feeling of a love-born bliss and oh more silvery in its sweetness to the soul's oracular ear than seemeth to the eye the wild white radiance of the maiden moon when from some cape's dark beak her rising mass looks o'er the ocean even with such a voice so keen so silvery did she ask me then where hast thou stayed so long oh tell me where with thrilling ears and heart i heard but felt pass from me forth a cry of sudden fear as swooning through the wildness of my joy methought i drifted whither all was now one wide cold blank the lady and the tower the gleaming lake with all around it one wide dreary blank 
the drearier for that still a dizzy clinging ghostly consciousness kept flickering from mine inmost pulse of life like a fair meteor in some dismal marsh how long i dreamt not but the thrilling warmth that like the new birth of a passionate bliss erewhile had searched me to the quick again shuddered within me more and more until mine eyes had opened under two that made all else like darkness and upon my cheek a breath that seemed the final spirit of health and floral sweetness harbingered once more the fond enquiry of that silver voice which once to have heard was never to forget where hast thou stayed so long oh tell me where and when she thus in her so wondrous way had spoken there came warbled as it seemed in mystical respondence to her voice still music such as aeolus gives forth but purer deeper warbled as from some unsearchable recess of soul supreme some depth of the eternal echoing thence through the sweet meanings of its spirit speech the fond inquiry that awoke me now where hast thou stayed so long oh tell me where i answered not but followed in mute love the beamy glances of her eyes with mine as in that balcony which up that tower emporched the brazen door methought i now close at her side reclined upon a couch of purple blazoned all with stars of gold tremblingly rayed with spiculated gems and argent moons and bearing on cushions rough save where they met the flexure of the arm with sheaves of flowers in glowing tissue wrought thus set we looking forth nor did i marvel as hers now led my vision to remark how the broad lake with its green shelving shores swarming with honey-yielding flowers or hung with vines in masses bunched with fruit and thence the prospect all hills skies and winding vales and bloomy forests of unspeakable beauty were basking in the blessedness of a day so goldenly serene that never yet the perfect power of life essential light might so enrobe since paradise was lost the common world inhabited by man i saw all this surpassing beauty but i saw it thus through her superior life as orbing mine in love yea saw it through her mystic moonlike sphere of being that seemed transpicuously the inexhaustible source of holiest motives and truth-bearing thoughts breathing abroad like odours from a flower and orient idealities and more of rosy passion and affectionate joy and earnest tenderness than many souls of earth's most fervent and ecstatic daughters united might possess all interflowing through the fine issues of a love at once wilful and nice but sanctioned none the less by its so brilliant purity nor might the glassy lake below more quickly give nimble impressions of the coming wind's invisible footsteps dimpling swift along than instant tokens of communion sweet with outward beauty's subtle spirit passed forth from her eyes and thence in lambent waves suffused and lightened o'er the splendid whole of her bright visage or about her head in spheres ran raying like a glory of bliss but as upon the wonder of her beauty my soul new feasted even till it seemed instinct with kindred lustre lo her eyes suddenly saddened then abstractedly outfixing them as on some far wild thought that darkened up like a portentous cloud over the morning of our peace she flung her silver voice into a mystic song of many measures which as forth they went slid all into a sweet abundant flood of metric melody and with this as still she poured it out invisible singers mixed a choral burden that prolonged the strain's rich concords till the echoes of the hills came challengingly forth and backward then 
subsiding like a refluent wave afar blent all into one mystery of sound one manifold cadence dying down the song which strangely seemed through all its mystic drift addressed to the so stubborn fact that i was sleeping and its utterer but a dream is traced upon the tablet of my soul in shining lines that intonate themselves not sounding to the ear but to the thought out of the vague east of the wonderful and might when hardened into mortal speech and narrowed from its wide and various sweep into such flows as make our waking rhymes most wildly musical be written thus the song wide apart wide apart in old time's dim heart one terrible fiend doth his stern watch keep over the mystery lovely and deep locked in thy history beautiful sleep could we disarm him could we but charm him the soul of the sleeper might happily leap through the darkness so dreadful so deathly and deep that shroudeth the triple divinity composing thy mystical trinity liberty gratitude boundless beatitude beautiful spirit of sleep beautiful spirit of sleep could we confound him who darkens thy throne could we surround him with spells like thy own for the divinity then of thy trinity oh what a blessed reign were begun for then were it ever more one with all that soul freed from the body's straight scheme inherits of seer light and mystical dream and to sleep were to die into life in the infinite holy and high spotless and bright and so peacefully deep and thence on to liberty thence on to gratitude with the third in thy trinity boundless beatitude beautiful spirits of sleep part three she ceased and a deep tingling silence fell instantly round silence complete and yet instinct as with a breathing sweetness left by the rare spirit of her voice foregone even as the fragrance of a flower were felt pervading the mute air through which erewhile it had been borne by the delighted hand of some sweet-thoughted maiden turning then her bright face towards me as i stood entranced yet with keener wonder stung she said i love thee as first love loveth utterly but ah this love itself this purple winged love this spirit enriching spirit of delight is but a honey-bee of paradise that only in the morning glory dares to range abroad and when a vagrant most adventure out into the common world of man and woman thither lured by sight of some sweet human soul that blooms apart untainted by a rank soil's weedy growths lured thither thus yet being even then but wilful wandering away away from its pure birthplace innocent only there and whereunto it must again return or forfeit else its natal passport ere the dread night cometh yet of how great worth is all forgone affection in the spring of even the lowliest love how many rich and gracious things that could not else have been grow up like flowers and breathe a perfume forth that never leaves again the quickened sense it once hath hit as with a fairy's wand however fanciful may seem at last the charm through which it came and having said these mystic sentences so wild and sweet and memorably mournful lo her eyes ran o'er with lustres as they opened up under mine own now melancholy gaze and thus we stood turned one unto the other till love again grew glad even from the rich and wine-like luxury and voluptuous worth of its own tear showers shed as from the heart forth then once more we looked silently happy alas not long for with a short low gasp of sudden fear she started 
nor might I stand unalarmed, for hark, within the tower, a sound of strenuous steps approaching fast, rang upward as it seemed, from the hard slabs of a steep winding stair, and soon the huge and brazen portal that behind us shut, burst open with a clang of loosened bolts, a clang like thunder that went rattling out against the echoes of the distant hills. With deafened ears and looks aghast I turned towards the harsh noise, there to behold, between the mighty jams in the tower wall from which the door swung inward, a tremendous form, a horrid gloomy form, that shapeless seemed, and yet in its so monstrous bulk, to man a hideous likeness bare still more and more deform it grew as forth it swelled and then its outlines shadowing forward so were lost on all sides in a grisly haze that hung vaguely about them even as dull grey clouds beskirt a coming tempest's denser mass that thickens still internally and shows the murkiest in the midst yea murkiest there where big with fate and hid in solid gloom the yet still spirit of the thunder broods and menaces the world so dread that form meanwhile beholding it the lady of light had rushed to my extended arms and hid her beamy face fright harrowed in my bosom and thus we stood made one in fear while still that terrible vision out upon us glared with horny eyeballs all the more horrid for that no evidence of conscious will or touch of passion vitalized their fixed eumenidean stone-cold stare as towards some surely destined task they seemed to guide its shapeless bulk and pitiless strength alone then with a motion as of one dark stride shadowing forward and outstretching straight one vague seen arm from my reluctant grasp it tore the radiant lady muttering this is love forbidden in a voice whose tones were like low guttural thunders heard afar out growling from the clouded gorges wild of neighbouring mountains when a sultry storm is pondering in its dark pavilions there and concentrating like a hill-born host ere its rush veilward and as suddenly seized by the other i was backward thrown within the tower and heard ere i could rise from the cold platform the huge brazen door drawn harshly grating to its beam-like bar dropped with a wall quake and the bolts all shot into their sockets with a shattering jar i may not paint the horrible despair that froze me now more horrible than aught in actual destiny whether bonds or death could give the self-possession of my soul if wide awake i listened all was still within without all silent stirless cold what was my doom and where was she my late so luminous delight gone reft away so strangely terribly and i myself for some all unimaginable cause a dungeoned wretch time every drip of which was as an age kept trickling on but there brought no release no hope brought not a breath that spake of fellowship or even of life out of myself my lonely self i stood utterly blank utterly shrunken up in marble cold astonishment of heart and when at length i cast the desperate look a look so desperate that the common gift of vision stung me like a deadly curse up and around pure pity of myself so warmed and loosened from my brain the pent and icy anguish that it slowed at once came like an alp thaw streaming through mine eyes till resignation that so balmy sweet meek flower of grief which hath its roots in tears 
grew out of mine and leisure therewithal to inspect my prison whether weak or strong it was a lofty coil half round and had massively set within the crossing wall that seemed to cut the towers whole round in twain a second door shut and all clamped with brass and rough with rows of monstrous iron studs and which might haply have thence opened in a thwart some stairway as i guessed that led down through the tower and by the side of this a bat-winged steed on scaly dragon claws a strange mute mystic almost terrible thing stood rigid with a tripod near it placed bare were the dull and ragged walls but pierced high out of reach by two small ports that looked eastward and westward as i noticed these full on my sight a transient sunbeam fell slantingly through and glowed on the damp floor a moment like a streak of burning blood then vanished wherefore in my heart i guessed that o'er the mountain tops the sun was then oceanward sinking mid the fiery clouds by sure and palpable degrees the night came on and the cell darkened yea i saw the steed and tripod all its furniture fade melting gradually more and more into the darkness even as a fish through the dense medium of its element retiring down is in its outline seen more shadowy till tis lost then all was black and to and fro i paced hour after hour and heard my step the only sound to me in all the wide world throb with a dull blow down through the hollow tower that seemed to yawn immeasurably beneath me as it were a monstrous well whose wide waste mouth was bridged by that dull quaking strip of floor alone on which i darkling strode yet on i kept pacing though horrified hour after hour passed as if clotting at the heart of time each an eternity of wild expectation and weary astonishment hour after hour and yet no other sound had being there though as i knew one live unmoving thing so near me stood in that blind solitude stood waiting wherefore by the inner door part four at last all suddenly in the air aloft o'er the tower a wild weird wailful song woke flying many voiced then sweeping off out towards the echoey hills so passed away in dying murmurs through the hollow dark song in vain were our spells wrought in vain was she well taught how that dread watcher's eyes drowsy to keep in vain was the dragon steed there at the hour of need out with his double freight blissward to sweep lost 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 in vain were our spells of an infinite cost lost 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 yon gulf by a mortal may never be crossed never ah never and doom holds for ever and to aid her aught more is out of sphere and transcendeth our law lost 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 come away come away since only in soul yon vague gulf can be crossed our beautiful mistress her failure must weep 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 away come away for see wide up rolling the white front of day away to the mystic mid regions of sleep of the beautiful spirit of sleep lost 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 so passed that song of which the drift alone is here reached after in such leaden speech as uncharmed mortals use and when its tones out towards the mountains in the dark afar had wasted i grew sensible methought of seasonable change that now the cell kept clarifying 
till the darkness seemed marbled with grey and then the steed again with his strange dragon claws and half-spread wings and eke the tripod where it still had stood figured like shadows through the thinning gloom and gradually thence by just the same degrees reversed in which they'd faded there into the darkness as the night advanced came forth in full development again it was the dawn and thus it clearing kept till through the eastern port a golden rod of light fell transiently and so bespake the sunrise oh it was a desolate pass to feel immured in that relentless keep how on the purple hills the sun was then rejoicing in his glory then to know that he was wheeling up the heaven and o'er my prison roof hour after hour to think how he was tracking with a step of fire his midway course and loudening through the world the thunder of its universal life or how his mighty orb had sloped in time's descending scale and thence was glorying down into the crimson waves of some wide sea beyond the hesperides but this alas was my dread fate while seven times day and night so wearily came so wore away and yet i slept not nor to my amazement there through all this drear time did the wintry tooth of hunger gnaw within my corporal frame no thirst inflamed me while by the grim door which seemed to shut athwart some stairway stood that strange unmoving dragon-footed steed as from the first and there the tripod placed as if to aid some fugitive to mount at once and fly mere wonder at my doom so unimaginably wild and vague relieved the else fixed darkness of despair but on the seventh night in the stillness hark what might i hear a step a small light step that by the stair ascending swiftly came straight to the inner door then stopped alas the black leaf opened not and yet the while in evidence of some bright being that out beyond it stood a rainbow radiance through its solid breadth in subtle wave on wave came flushing even as a sunset's glow through some dense cloud upon the verge of heaven in swift rich curves wells percolating forth so came it filling all the cell at length with rosy lights that in the darkness fumed like luminous odours at the scent of which the mystic steed so rigid until then moved and spread wide his glimmering bat-like wings when hark deep down in the mysterious tower another step yea the same strenuous tramp that once before i'd heard big beating up came following till a low sad cry without went to my heart and i might hear ensue a struggle as of one forced down the stair by that so ruthless guard down till the cell again had darkened and the tower itself stood once more as in some mute void of time or depth of distance infinitely out achingly still but not for long again the monster's hateful tramp came booming up quake above quake that with a shudder stopped dead at the door it opened and he stood in dubious presence twixt the mighty jams filling the whole wide space but ere the fiend might enter farther rage and hate at once possessed me and i charged him for a while his horrible glooms voluminously vague yet with a smothering pressure in their folds involved me concentrating more and more and lapping closer in yet denser coils every dread moment but my agony now my pain and hate and loathing all had grown into so vast a horror that methought i burst with irresistible strength away rushed through the door and down the stairway down an endless depth 
till a portcullis hinged in the tower's basement opened to my flight no sooner had i passed it than it fell in thunder too and thence my passage lay along the difficult ledges of a rock against whose base the lake's long ripple lapped and when at last breathless and faint i paused in that so giddy flight methought i saw the lustrous lady up through the lit air ascending with a steadfast downward look of parting recognition full of love but painless passionless upward she passed above the tower and o'er the clouds and when her radiance melted through heaven's marble dome and left it vacant in its infinite vastness all things methought had changed and i was there standing alone in a wide waste that stretched on all hands out illimitably out standing alone in a waste universe that showed as under an abortive dawn its grey immensity and nothing more still empty objectless and thereupon there fell back on my soul a sense of loss so bleak so desolate that with a wild sleep-startling outcry suddenly i awoke awoke to find it but a dream of wonder yet ever since to feel as if some pure and guardian soul out of the day and night had passed for ever from the reach of love albeit i know that to the poet's mind no light no loveliness it once hath known though only through the mystery of a dream is after lost but in effect remains as comfort or as wisdom or as grace in union with its substance evermore a gathered portion of the light and might of his predestined influence on the world end of the tower of the dream by charles harper